Church. I'm glad you could be with us this morning as we begin our time uh, with the Word of God each morning. We're going to try to take just a portion of Scripture and use it to find a word of encouragement or possibly some idea that you can use throughout the day in order to serve Christ with. Good Monday to you. I hope and pray that you're going to have a great week this week in the study of God's Word as you go forth to do His business. Uh, we're going to be using the book of Philippians uh, to do our devotions out of, simply because Philippians is a book of joy. It's a book of rejoicing. Paul talks a lot about that. And it's a pretty amazing book because as Paul begins the book in chapter number 1, in verse 1, he tells us he's a prisoner. So Paul is talking about rejoicing in spite of the circumstances. Boy, does that fit our need today. We're going through some difficulties and things that we've never experienced in at least my lifetime. And uh, they uh, may be overblown, may not be overblown. We're going to see what the Lord's going to do with this. And yet at the same time, they're very real. And so the circumstances are not that we are like Paul, who was a prisoner in a jail cell and unable to move about freely. Uh, but we do have limitations as well. But I believe the world needs to see people who are people of joy, people who rejoice, even in the midst of very difficult circumstances. And we'll talk more about Paul's situation uh, in other uh, studies. Well, Paul begins and he pronounces a, a, a blessing of grace and peace upon uh, the people of God. And then he says in verse 3 of chapter 1, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. Paul begins by saying, I think about you guys often. I think he would go ahead and say, I miss you. I can't be with you right now. Paul had spent time with that church and had ministered. In fact, Paul helped to start that church. Many of those people he had led to the Lord. And so he had ministered to and ministered with these people. And he could not do that any longer because of his incarceration. And so uh, he is giving them a blessing. And he says, I also pray for you all the time. I hope you know that we pray for you as a staff. And I hope you pray for us. Pray for one another. These are times in which uh, we don't get to see each other as often. And I'll just be honest and say, I miss you. It's uh, difficult not being around the church that you love all the time and being able to see the smiling faces as you're uh, ministering the Word of God, fellowshipping with and ministering to one another. And so uh, we do miss you. We do pray for you. And we know that you pray for us as well. Then Paul says, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Uh, he goes ahead and says in verse 6, being confident this very thing, that he who begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my chains and in my defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers with me of grace. For God is my witness, how greatly I long for you with all uh, aff affection uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul reveals his heart here. Again, he loves this church, but he loves this church because the Lord loves this church. It's the Lord's church. And Paul wants to make sure they know that they have not been abandoned, they have not been forgotten. And again, we want you to know the same thing. As we minister the gospel, as we do our ministries now, we want you to know that our hearts are with you. I want you to know again, as Paul talks about thanking God all the time, this is a good time that we can spend time in prayer. Many of you do not get to go to work uh, as often as you did. You still got chores around the house and other things that you can catch up on. But this would sure be a good time for us to catch up on prayer, praying for those that you think of. Uh, on our website, you can go uh, to our Emmanuel Light uh, newsletter and you can click on it. And on one side, you'll find there is the announcements that we're trying to keep you up with what's going on. But then on the other side is a prayer list. And from time to time, during your times of devotion, uh, pray over just one section of those or a few names on that list. I hope and pray each day uh, that you'll sing a few songs as a family, if you have a family with you and that you will pray together. We're going to be doing that at the end of each devotion as well. But spend time singing, studying the Word of God with me or without me. And then also make sure that you spend time in praying for one another. 
One other thing Paul says that I, I really love, and it's probably one of the verses that you can quote uh, by heart, is in verse number six. Being confident of this very thing, that who, he who begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. Paul didn't get to see a lot of the fruit of his ministry there at Philippi. In fact, he had to leave rather abruptly. He didn't get to stay all that long. And oftentimes, uh, that would be the case when Paul would go and start a church. Uh, he would be run out of town, if you will, uh, because of preaching the gospel. Uh, but he was assured that God was going to continue the work that he begun. We get a great calm assurance of our salvation from that verse, that God who begun a work in your heart isn't going to abandon that work. Jesus told uh, several little parables concerning uh, those who are going to be committed to him must take up their cross and follow him and deny themselves or they can't be his disciples. And then he said that what about a guy who begins to build a building and he doesn't have enough to complete it? He said, that man's a fool. He didn't count the cost of whether or not he was going to complete the project. And then he talks about what about a king who decides he's going to go to war and he didn't uh, first sit down and count the cost whether or not he's going to be able to win this thing. And he gets in the middle of it, and he's going to have to abandon the, uh, what he already started. And what he's saying is, that's foolish. Well, I know Jesus isn't foolish. God's no fool. When God begins a work of salvation in the hearts of individuals, God is going to continue that work until the day that Jesus Christ uh, comes again. I believe as you look through Ephesians and uh, Philippians, and as you look to the Colossians, and particularly 1 Thessalonians, all these churches that Paul writes to, even the Roman church, all the churches Paul writes to, he often mentions the second coming of Jesus. I am convinced we're moving toward that day. What a joyous time to be alive. What a great time uh, to have opportunity to share the gospel. Don't look at these as down days, as uh, days that we just need to somehow endure. Look at these as days of opportunity. We have great opportunity during these days, not only to draw closer to one another as a family, support one another as a church, but also to share the gospel with those who at this moment are in a great deal of unrest about the future. We know who the future holds and who holds the future. And uh, we know that Jesus Christ is going to continue his work in us until the day of redemption. Keep that in mind as you go through today. The There's nothing that's going to happen to you that you have to worry about because Jesus Christ will complete the work in your heart that he has begun. Would you pray with me? Father, we thank you that we can have this moment together in prayer, knowing that your word as it goes forth will accomplish great things. We do pray for our church, this church called Emmanuel. We thank you, Father, for the, the leadership of the church. We thank you for our deacons, our Sunday school teachers, uh, people who minister to one another, for the committees who work hard and for those who even are doing the things such as mowing and uh, taking care of the shut-ins and, and doing uh, all kinds of ministries, we're so grateful for that. Bless your church during these uh, difficult days and give us the guidance, give us direction. Now these families, Father, that are doing their devotions, I pray your Holy Spirit will manifest His presence that they may know that you are near in Jesus' name. Amen.